we are going to do a quick review of the S-Pod touchscreen versus the physical HD controller. And here's the touchscreen controller. So to turn it on, you just press it once. It'll wake up the screen. And you can also turn it back off in case you're driving at night and you don't want the glare. Some of the features that make this stand out over the HD controller is that it shows you your battery level, your engine compartment temperature, and has some setup features. Now to activate one of your relays, you just press the button and press it to turn it off. It's that simple. Now you can see there's some other features such as the front bumper here. We're gonna go ahead and dim this. You can go all the way from 100% down to 1% and back up. And the nice thing is if you dim it down, you turn it off and you turn it back on, it retains that setting so you don't have to set it every single time. You can also turn on as many switches as you want consecutively. All of them if you'd like. Now under the setup, we have a couple different options here. What we're gonna do is we're going to label one of our switches. And now you can see there it says, hello on the third switch. You can also dim the brightness of the screen. There you go. So if you go ahead and switch your controller into off-road mode, you get the extra option of being able to strobe any assigned light. Uh, you can strobe one, two, three, as many as you want. Now we're gonna jump into the setup menu and we're going to link two of our switches. Linking a switch means when you turn one on, the other one turns on as well and the same when you turn it off. So I turned on six, seven turned on, turn off six, seven turned on. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the HD controller. So here you can see it. Uh, to wake it up, you press it once. I've got it set for 10 minutes to sleep, so you can't turn off the backlight from here. And to turn it on, you just press the button again. When the light's red, it's on. When the light red light's off, it's off. And uh, the blue light means that you're hitting the button. So, you can see you can turn it on. Almost all of the settings available on the touchscreen are available on this, minus the ability to dim on the fly and to change the name of the buttons. But here you can see that I've assigned button number seven and linked it with number six. So when I press seven, six lights up at the same time. So it's activating both switches at the same time. But when I press button number six, it does not activate button number seven. And if you press and hold, you can access the functions such as strobe right there. One of my favorite parts about this S-Pod HD controller is how responsive it is. Unlike the touch screen, which I frequently have issues with, uh, this one responds every single time you press the button. There's no accidental presses or times where you have to try to find the button three or four times in a row. The HD controller has built-in Bluetooth, so after pairing with your phone, you can use the app to control all of the switches. In addition, you can change things like backlight color, the brightness, how long it takes for the backlight to go to sleep, and which source you're connecting to in case you want to link more than one S-Pod together. Here are some of the pictures of the different color settings. Uh, these are on full brightness under each red, blue, and green. You can do any RGB combo to mix colors. And here's where you can set up each individual switch. So you can make it dimmable. You can also make it strobe, flash, which is just a slower version of strobe. You can make it momentary, so you can press it, and as soon as you let go, it turns off, so it's only active while you're pressing it. You can enter text for the use of the app, and uh, here you can also change the color of the switch or button inside of the app, but it does not change it individually on the controller. The entire controller is one color. You'll also notice that next to the switch, there's a bar, and at the bottom of the bar, it says zero that appears to be an amp meter that uh, when your switch is active 
it will show how many amps that the attached accessory is pulling. Here's a quick size comparison between the touchscreen controller and the HD switch panel. You can see that the HD switch panel is the same height, but the width is about an inch, a little over an inch wider. It's a little thinner and it mounts better to flat surfaces. Touchscreen controller mounts more like a GPS. Overall, I prefer the HD switch panel over the touchscreen controller, mostly for the responsiveness and ease of use. The touchscreen is definitely nicer if you're going to be changing the names and the wording a lot or dimming your lights frequently, but I found that those are more fun features that generally I just don't need while I'm off-road. I hope you liked the video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. And if you have any ideas of something I should do, please feel free to send me a message and I'll see what I can do. 